Yeah. Hello, boys and girls. Let us pray. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, I come to you this day. Thank you for the day that you've given us. Thank you for allowing us to be in your presence tonight and be able to dive into your word and learn. I pray that you undertake that we're listening and paying attention so that we can receive your word and go out into the world and utilize it to witness and be in your light in the world, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray again. Thanks. Amen. Hi there, ALBM family. Welcome back to another ALBM Saturday night Bible class. We're happy to have you here with us today. My name is Sister Liz. I will be going over the books of the Bible, followed by Sister Citro with a memory verse, and then Brother Covian with the lesson. Let's make sure we have our Bibles in our hands, our minds and our hearts are prepared to receive God's Word. Let's get started by reciting the Old Testament book. Genesis, of the Bible. Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, First and Second Samuel, First and Second Kings, First and Second Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, Job, Psalms, and Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, then Ezekiel, and then Daniel, Jose, Joel. Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, Malachi, that's Haggai, Zechariah, Malachi. All right, guys, let's get ready to play Who Am I? Question number one, coming up. today's book of the Bible review and if not that's okay I pray that you learned something up next is sister C sister Citra praise the Lord young people I'm Sister Citra, and tonight I'll be bringing you the memory verse portion of your lesson. Tonight, our memory verse will be coming from Psalm chapter 119, verse 15. Praise the Lord, young people. My name is Sister Citra, and tonight I'll be bringing to you the memory verse portion of our lesson. Tonight, uh, the memory verse will be coming from Psalm 119, verse 15. All right, that is Psalm 119, verse 15. So I'm going to ask you to get your Bibles. Sister Citra has hers here ready. Um, we are going to go ahead and we're going to read it from God's Word first. I'm going to do that together. All right, and it reads Psalm 119, verse 15. I will meditate in thy precepts and have respect 
unto thy ways. Amen. All right. Amen. Uh, and what we're going to now do is we're going to do our usual where we do our drills and we will drill um, it together. So um, go ahead. And if you could, please say it with me. All right. It is Psalm 119 verse 15. And it says, I will meditate in thy precepts and have respect unto thy ways. Again, Psalm 119 verse 15. I will meditate in thy precepts and have respect unto thy ways. All right. Amen. That is so great. We're going to do it one more time. It is Psalm 119 verse 15. I will meditate in thy precepts and have respect unto thy ways. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Young people, we thank you so much for tuning in tonight. Um, we appreciate you doing that every single night. Um, we also want to remind you to tell your friends about us. We are on YouTube, um, a Abundant Life Bible Mission. At the end of the message, we are going to have the, um, that information for our YouTube channel so you can like and subscribe. Next up is Brother Covian with the lesson. Thank you. Praise the Lord, LBM Saints and boys and girls. This is Brother Covian coming to you with the next message in our series. This one is called David Plays the Harp. And it comes, David Plays His Harp, excuse me. And it comes from... Uh, 1 Samuel chapter 16, verses 14 through 23. And the aim of this lesson that I wanted to give you is that God will prepare the way. Be patient and obedient while he's working it out. God will prepare the way. Be patient and obedient while he's working it out. Let's have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, as we get into your word today, into the lesson that you have given us, I just ask that you will hide me behind the cross, Lord. I never want to be seen or heard when I'm doing what you've called me to do. Just want to bring glory to your name and point people to you. So, Lord, I ask that you would take over this message, Heavenly Father. Will you anoint it and will you use it to change somebody's life today and to draw some closer to you? In Jesus' name, I pray and give thanks. Amen. Now, just a quick back portion to bring us up to date on where we are today. We remember that Saul has been rejected by God as a king because Saul was just so disobedient and so many different things he wouldn't listen on. So now he's been rejected by God and he's now dealing with evil spirits that are troubling him. And we already know that David is to become the king, but this doesn't happen until down the road. So in the story now, what we see is uh, when we start with in the area at verse uh, 14, it says, but the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul and an evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. Verse 15, and Saul's servant said unto him, behold, now an evil spirit from God troubleth thee. Let our Lord now command thy servants, which are before thee to seek out a man who is cunning, playing player on a harp. And it shall come to pass when the evil spirit from God is a play with his hand and thou shalt be well. And what I want you to remember that we already know that God said that David is to become the king. So he is now preparing the way for him. So let's see how that all happens. And Saul said unto his servants, provide me now a man that can play well and bring him to me. Then answered one of the servants and said, behold, I have seen a son of Jesse, the Bethlehemite, that is cunning and playing and a mighty valiant man and a man of war and prudent in matters and a comely person and the Lord is with him. So Saul sends for him. He said he wants him to come and be his harp player. And he did absolutely that. Jesse, he sent to the house of Jesse to have David come over there. And David did come to him. And he uh, was in the, he, he immediately cared so much for David. He loved David because of his character and the type of person that he was. And um, he always felt better after David, David played a harp for him. The, actually, the, 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 the evil spirit, from God would actually leave him when David played the harp. So David has so much of God's favor that even God says the evil spirit, he took it away from Saul when David played the harp. So again, preparing the way from him, preparing the way for him. So again, we've all, we already know that God has said that David is going to be the king. So David took all this time observing, learning, 
how to be the king. That's what he used it for. Is God not positioning him for what he said would happen? So now he's taking all this time. He's observing. He's learning the things that he would need to do to become the king. Saul didn't see it that way. He never saw it. He didn't realize that this young boy who was playing the harp was the person who was going to replace him as a king. He had no idea. But again, the Lord is now preparing the way. So let's go back to our objective. God will prepare the way. Be patient while he's working it out. Was David obedient by going and saying, you know what, I'm going to go up here and I'm going to play the harp. He's doing exactly what God has called him to do. He's being the humble servant that God wants him to be. He goes and he plays the harp and he's doing the thing just as God asked him to do. And God is preparing the way for him. So the plan for David to be the king is still in the future. I'm reading from the book now. But he used this time profitably. By being a part of palace life and an aide to King Saul, David gained firsthand information, information that he would need about leading a nation. The next area says sometimes our plans, even the ones that are approved by God, need to be put on hold until God sees the right time has come to continue his plan for our life. It's best to be patient and let God lead. So what I want you all to see today is that, and I can use myself, many times God has shown me something that he wanted me to do or somewhere he wanted to use me. And I'm like, God, how is this going to work? And everything that he's taken me through in my life or, or things that I've experienced in life were teaching me to be where he wanted me to be so that I knew how to handle the duty that he had for me. Isn't that wonderful how God works? So just remember, as a man, as a woman of God, as a child of God, even as a young person, there's ways God wants to use you. So what he's doing is he's teaching you through that process. And you just got to be patient. Remember, what we said the obje objective was. I'm going to read that again before we stop. But just remember, you have to be patient and you have to be obedient to what God has, so, has, has said and what he has you doing. Keep your eyes on him because he's going to use you for his glory. He's going to use you. He's going to put you where you need to be to bring glory to his name so that others can see that light and get right. to know Christ. So just don't ever forget that. Remember what we said. God will prepare the way. We just need to be patient and obedient while he's working it out. God is completely laying the path for David. David is now in the palace. He's in the palace. The future king. Nobody even realizes it right now. The future king is in the palace playing the harp. Saul has no idea that this is what is going to happen. But you know what? This is the order that God said. God said it will be. So you got to remember when people come against you, when God has already said this is what, what I'm going to have happen, you don't have to worry about the people who are coming against you because there's nothing they can do to change or stop the plan that God has set in place. He's going to protect you. He's going to cover you. He's going to be with you every step of the way. All you need to do is keep your eyes on him and be obedient to what he has asked you to do. Right here, Here's Mr. God's word. It's right here. He said David would be king. We don't know how that's going to happen. How was he going to get there? Now God is just preparing the way he has him in the palace, playing the heart for the king. He doesn't know that he's working with the future king. But God has set it in motion, and now he's preparing the way. He's going to do the exact same thing in our lives. We just remember, we just have to remember to look to him and put him first. As long as we put him first, as long as we don't forget what God has told us and keep our heart, our mind, our eyes stayed upon him, he's going to prepare the way. Amen. Father God, thank you for your word. Thank you for the message that you gave me to share with the kids and with the ALBM family and with all who are listening. Lord, please help us to keep our eyes on you. Help us to be patient. Help us to do your work, dear Heavenly Father, and help us to keep our eyes on you as you take us through the process of uh, putting us where you want us to be. As you prepare the way for us, help us to remember to be obedient while you're doing your work and for us to keep our hearts, our minds, and our eyes stayed upon thee. So we just thank you for what you're going to do. Thank you for your love and your care for us. In Jesus' name we pray and give thanks. Amen. All right, as we continue, um, I want to talk about something very, very important. Um, we have so much going on in our world right now, and uh, 
we just uh, had a message of uh, people who are listening to what Jesus has to say, who are sitting at his feet, um, you know, uh, his disciples, his children, people who know him and people who are getting to know him and hopefully saying yes to Jesus Christ. Um, but what if you haven't said yes to Jesus Christ yet? How do you establish a personal relationship with him? How do you know that when you leave this earth that you're going to go to heaven? Um, there's so many people afraid right now because of this pandemic that we have going on. Um, school has been canceled. Businesses are closed. People are stuck in their houses and uh, everybody's panicking. And uh, some, well, some people are panicking, not everybody, but some people are panicking because they're like, what's going on? You know, like, what do I do next? And they're afraid. But for the believer, um, these should be exciting times for us because I believe that God has once again slowed everything down so that we can all get our focus back on him. And this is also an opportunity for us to tell people about Jesus and how they can get to know him. So we'll talk about the way to heaven. Okay. Why did God give his son? It's because he loved the world so much. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Jesus, be, Jesus came to the world. The Word became flesh. He lived. He died. And he did that for us so that we could be saved. That's why he gave his Son. He loved us so much. He didn't want us to die and go to hell. He wanted us to be with him. So then you may ask, well, well why do I need Jesus? What is my need for Jesus? Why do I need him? We need Jesus because we have sinned. I have sinned. Sometimes we sin by getting into fights. So many other things that we do. We disobey our parents. Um, um, our sin brings sadness. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, uh, Romans uh, 3.23 says. That's why we need Jesus, because we have sinned. Sin separates us from the love of God. There is a penalty for sin. If we don't accept Jesus, there's a penalty for sin. Sin must be punished. Read this line right here. Sin must be punished. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. That's found in Revelation 20, 15. And it says again, for the wages of sin is death. But, and thank God for this word, but right here, B-U-T. But <laughs> the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Romans 6, 23 is where that scripture is found, okay? So what did Jesus do for you? What did Jesus do for me? He was punished in my place. He was punished in your place, okay? He is not still dead. He is alive and he's in heaven. He took the punishment for our sins. 1 Corinthians 15, 3 to 4, pardoned for our sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Okay? So what do I need to do? How do I accept this gift? How do I become a member of God's family? How does my name get written in the Lamb's book of life? How do I know that when he returns, I will be with him? Okay? For again, for the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. He gives us a gift. The gift of God is to receive Jesus Christ, to accept salvation from Jesus Christ. That is how we establish it. That's how that is how we establish a relationship with Jesus Christ. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. That is found in John chapter 1, verse 12. Okay? So we must receive God's gift. Do you want to receive God's gift today? Do you want to receive his gift? For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved, says Romans 10, 13. So there's a prayer that we need to pray if we want to be in the family of God. It's a very simple prayer that if we pray it and we mean it, we immediately be born into the family of God. And that prayer reads, and if you want to just pray it right now, you can bow your head, close your eyes right where you are, and just say this prayer right along with me. You can say, Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. I'm sorry for my sins. I believe that you died on the cross to pay for my sins and rose from the dead. Please come into my heart today. Come into my heart and life and save me. Help me to live for your glory. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, what you need to do now is uh, 
reach out to, you have just been born into the family of God, first of all. And now what you need to do is reach out to, um, you know, your, your spiritual leaders here, at the Abundant Life Bible Mission, uh, the leadership in this group, um, you know, you can reach out now and we'll tell you how to become a disciple, how to build that relationship with Jesus Christ and continue to grow in his faith and grow in his love. And next thing you know, you'll be telling your friends about Jesus. You'll be telling other people how they can be saved and how they can have a relationship with God. And that is the most important thing, especially during these times right now. We don't know when the Lord is going to return, but a lot of biblical prophecy is being fulfilled right now with everything that's going on. It is being fulfilled and the Lord is coming back soon to take us where? To take us to heaven. So what you just learned was how to get there. And the way to get to heaven is through Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for again for this time. Thank you for this class. Thank you for this message. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the opportunity to still um, get online and share with the children. We ask that you to keep them engaged, keep them focused, help them to build upon what you've started teaching them, help them to draw closer and closer to you. In Jesus' name we pray and give thanks. Amen.